it took me eight spools of filament just to make one of these giant 3D printed helmets. Now stick with me and I'll explain why it took eight spools of filament and just how we made these monster helmets for Open Sauce 2023. Now some of you don't know what Open Sauce is, so let me explain, but first let me get this. All right. So Open Sauce was an event this year. It was the very first year, and it was in San Francisco, California. And it was a two-day event where they had over a 1,000 people that arrived that were creators and makers. And it was an incredible event. I was invited by Gloop, one of the sponsors of our show. And Gloop asked for some helmets to be created, some crazy, outlandish, wild, giant helmets. Now I have to come clean. Remember how I just told you it was eight spools of filament for one giant helmet? Well, it really wasn't. It was four spools of filament for one particular helmet, but we had a failure. And I'll share that with you in a moment. Let me show you this filament. This is Polymaker filament. And, and this is Pastel Rainbow Polyterra PLA. So let me tell you a little bit about Polyterra. Polyterra is a PLA-like filament, but it's 25% minerals, which is actually kind of fantastic. And every spool of Polymaker filament that you buy, they plant a tree. Yay! Kind of cool. Let me open this. All right. So I'm going to show you this. This is a gorgeous filament. And I thought it was the perfect filament for this helmet. And trust me, you're, you're going to like it. Take a look at this. It is a pastel rainbow. Come on, focus. There it is. Pastel rainbow. And it's a matte filament. So the finish is, is not quite glossy. And it's got a selection of colors. And interesting fact, it takes about 200 grams of filament to get through one cycle of the rainbow. Wow. But check this out. So we needed a lot of this. We needed four spools of filament for one particular helmet. And here's the thing. On spool number four, we had the power go out. I had an issue up here. We're completely off grid. And our generator didn't fire up for whatever reason. And I'm running this on a Neptune 3 Max, an Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. And it didn't have the power recovery mode enabled by default on that printer. And I remember the power went out. Everything clicked. It went dark. I went running out of this studio as fast as I could. I ran out to the generator building, and I got all the power back on, everything fixed. I came back in, and the printer doesn't recover. And we lost the print. Look at this. This is a monster helmet. Look at this. And look where it failed. Right there. Oh, so frustrating. What do you do? Nothing. Well, you say, that's fine. Print it again. Well, I plan to. But here's the problem. I only had seven spools of this filament. It takes four. I, would, I only have three left. So what am I supposed to do? Nothing. I can't. I can't finish the helmet. Luckily enough, we have a fantastic community. I went to our live Twitch show. And I brought this up to our community and I said, listen, I'm in trouble. The Polymaker website's out. I only have three of them. What do I do? And how awesome is this? Vredog Knight, a wonderful member of our community, is local. And Vredog Knight's wife, Moose, by the way, these are Twitch names. So his wife's name, I mean, it's not Moose. I mean, if your wife's name is Moose, that's fine. But I don't think his wife's name is actually Moose. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Moose had won a spool of this filament on our Twitch show. The previous week, it had just arrived. Breedog Knight generously offered to come and hand this to me. I met up with him, wonderful, wonderful guy, and uh, we were able to finish the helmet. Now, I'm going to show you the helmet in a moment. And, well, actually, you might even be seeing B-roll of it. But you are going to love this thing. It is massive. It is 133% scale. Now, the traditional clone trooper helmets, like, like that one back there that you can see, that's at about 96%. And it's still a little big. This helmet is at 133%. It is massive. I'm going to show you how we made it, made it, and I'm going to tell you why we made it and why we had to put safety helmets inside the helmets. Now, this is a Rainbow Clone Trooper Bunny Mashup Helmet. Now, it's a really fun design. The design uh, was created by a friend of mine, Nick Dimelow. You guys would know him as Bugman underscore 140 on Twitter and on Twitch. And he was incredibly kind and generous, and he made some really fun helmets for us that are one-offs. The main bucket is actually by Galactic Armory. And Nick Dimelow modified it for us. He turned it into a really fun rabbit model. And I thought for open sauce for 2023, for this particular event... How cool would it be if one of the helmets was a giant rabbit clone trooper? 
thought it would definitely get some attention. Now, Gloop, let's get back to this. Gloop invited us to create these really fun helmets, and it was a top secret project. And the top secret project was basically this. Gloop has a robot arm. It's like a 6,000 pound plus robot arm. They're going to do tug of war with different social media creators and different people at the open source event. And the creators have to have a safety helmet on, which means they have to have like a, like basically like a protective helmet, like a hard hat or a skateboard helmet. And so Gloop said, Hey, why don't we wrap those helmets in something fun to make it a little bit more interesting and to show off 3D printing and to show off Gloop. The robot arm is actually in the tug of war is pulling against some prints that were created. I believe they were trying to pull Gloop apart, but you really can't because Gloop is a fantastic adhesive where it actually physically like welds the 3D prints together where you can't pull them apart. Matter of fact, it's going to separate at the layers and actually tear the filament apart before it tears the glooped joints apart. Now enough about open source. Let's talk about how we made the helmets. We 3D printed the base bucket on an Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. And it took about, no, it took three days. It took a long time. The ears were actually 3D printed on the Lulzbot Taz Pro XT, which is an incredible printer that Lulzbot saved us. Get this, we needed a taller printer with a massive Z in order to print these. And Lulzbot, I called them up on the phone, talked to the owner, and how cool is that? They put that box together and they got that expedited and shipped over to us incredibly fast. And are you ready? It's a $5,500 3D printer. Oh my gosh, it is amazing. And it has a 580 millimeter Z. Did you hear that? 580 millimeters on the Z. It's insane. And that's what we printed the ears on. And then of course we took the ears and we glooped them to the main bucket. Inside the helmet, we needed to put foam, right? Expanding foam, because we have the skateboard helmet that we have to install. So we put expanding foam in the bottom. We put some tape over the top of the helmet so that the expanding foam wouldn't go into the skateboard helmet. And we installed that skateboard helmet inside and we, we got it all nice and level. And then we foamed around it, made it nice and snug. Now, before we did that, we had to put a visor in it and we put, a, uh, I'll have links in the description below, but we had a green tinted safety visor that we installed but i did put a red tint like a slight red tint with car window tint over the top of that visor to just to it's still dark and you really can't tell it's there but if in person you can easily or clearly see that there is a red tint on the visor and it looks fantastic and then of course we put the aerators on the front we put these really cool teeth i custom did these teeth inside uh, bamboo slicer and it turned out fantastic. And this helmet is huge and it's a lot of fun. And they had a great time with it at Open Sauce. Now, are you ready? That was just one of the helmets that we did. The Halo Master Chief helmet has been one of our most popular helmets. And so what I did is I scaled this up to 125%, I believe, 122 or 125%, one of the two. I sliced this up into multiple pieces inside Prusa Slicer. I built a profile for the Lulzbot Taz Pro XT, and we printed all the pieces on that machine in vertically and took up a massive amount of that giant Z on that printer. And we printed them in my filament. Where's that? Where's my filament? We printed them in my filament, LM Sparkle Green, which is a gorgeous filament. It is an, and by the way, it's a PLA Pro. So this is a sparkle. PLA Pro in its official LM filament, and we printed that Halo Master Chief helmet in that filament, and it is huge. You're probably going to be looking at it here on screen any moment. It is a massive helmet, and I'll check out the visor I put in it. That is the same darkened green visor that, will, like I said, we'll have links in the description below, but I multi-layered some car window tint to give it a highly reflective gold finish, and it looks absolutely incredible. It's gorgeous. It's really hard on camera to show exactly how big this helmet is, and I hope it comes across on screen, but in person, it is massive. Give me a moment. I want to thank some of the sponsors that helped make this possible. So first off, Gloop. Thank you so much, Gloop, for sponsoring the LM Show, for putting on this event at Open Source and allowing us to participate. I sincerely appreciate it. Also, I want to thank Polymaker. Polymaker is incredible, and they supplied all of the filament for all of these helmets, and, and we're grateful for that. So thank you so much. LDO Motors, wow. They are an incredible sponsor of the LM Show, and they sent us over a Voron 
2.4, 350 millimeter machine for this event. And in the middle of putting all that together, we had a failure that stopped us in our tracks. And we didn't get that machine put together to use it for the open source event. And I sincerely apologize, LDO. You are so incredible. And so we are going to finish that machine as well as the, I don't know if you can see this over here. There's a Trident uh, 300 sitting right here. And we will finish these two machines that you sent us and we're going to create some fantastic content and we're going to get people so excited about you and uh, in what you do and how you support us. So thank you, LDO, for that. And of course, Lulzbot, we mentioned you, but we want to thank you officially. Thank you so much, Lulzbot, uh, for stepping in at the last moment like that and sending us a machine uh, with such an incredible Z um, and such an expensive machine uh, to help us out. We sincerely appreciate it. And we have some fantastic agriculture content coming up. You guys are not going to want to miss it. It's going to be pretty interesting. Okay, I have one last kind of surprise situation that happened. In the midst of this, printing this helmet, I realized I didn't have the right nozzle for that Elegoo Neptune 3 Max in order to print these helmets as fast as possible. I was out of nozzles, and I needed a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Well, so I called up our other sponsor, Micro Swiss, and they happened to be on their way to, I believe it was Murph, and they express ship a couple of 0.8 millimeter nozzles to us so that we could finish this project for open source. So this was an incredible experience where so many wonderful sponsors of the LM show came together to make this whole thing happen. You think that you can just slice up helmets like this or scale, you know, scale them up, slice them up, throw them to a printer, but you'll quickly find out that it takes months and months and years of experience printing helmets like this and knowing how to orient them and knowing the, all the slicer settings to get things right the first time. Now, other than the failure that we had with the power going out, this was the very first slice of this helmet. And that happens because we built a profile for making these helmets here on the show. And we're able to use that experience to just literally scale it up switch it to a different machine and hit print. And it is a lot of work, but the results are fantastic. So thanks for sticking around. And I hope you enjoyed watching our little creation of these helmets. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also don't forget to ring that bell. I keep forgetting to say that. That's important. It really helps us out and you'll get notified when, when we post new content. And of course, don't forget to comment below if you have any questions at all about how we make these helmets, about profiles, uh, filaments, uh, slicing techniques, orientation, it doesn't matter. Ask those questions below and I will be more than happy to answer them. Also in the description below, we're going to have links to all of the things that we used, including the filament, um, our affiliate links and the visors and all of that. That'll all be there. And before we go, let's not forget to thank our YouTube members. I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. You are what make this channel possible. And if you'd like to have your name included in our YouTube videos, reach down there right below, hit that join button and become a YouTube member of our channel. Thank you so much, Jedi Spidey. Thank you, Buddha 3 d your buddy, Denek, Cetral, Free Dog Knight, Rip Artist, Patrick W3D, which, by the way, has an awesome YouTube channel. You should go check him out, youtube.com slash at Patrick W3D, The Cinzia, Luppy Leptonium, Cam Nicholas, Waste in Time, Brandon0109, Joel Finn, and Sir Will 3 d who happens to be my personal friend, IRL. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate your support. We'll see you on the next one.